I really like the, the, the ZMA, it helps me sleep a lot better. And even throughout the day, you know, I'll just take a little nap here and there, which allows me to work harder and keep that intense, you know, training going. Hey everybody, Marcos Viegas here with Ken Porter, the father of Sean Porter and his trainer as well, where your son defended his belt here tonight. Yes. What are your feelings overall on the performance and how the fight played out in your eyes? It played out exactly as I was asking him to do as we were boxing. He did a beautiful job of boxing and I was very happy with what he did. Um, you know, um, there's going to be in, in every fight, there's going to be instances where, you know, after the judging is over, where you're kind of questioning what happened. But I was very happy that, uh, you know, he did what I asked him to do. And, and I, did, I couldn't ask him to do much more than that. Um, there were, you know, the, the, get, the, the guy we're fighting is a great fighter. Two-time world champion on the amateur level, gold medalist in world championships, and then also a bronze medalist. So it was a high risk and a low reward. When I would ask, when people would say, who you fighting? I said, Ugas. They say, who? I said, Ugas. They said, who? Ugas. Who and Ugas almost sound the same. It just was, you know, it wasn't a, a name, a marquee name that people knew about. When you look at how the fight ended up with the scores. It was one to Ugas, one to Sean, and then the other to Sean. Did you guys feel the fight was that close or you no, felt definitively? I never, I never felt it was close. I had a guy, you know, that I was looking at that wasn't in control of his movement, wasn't in control with his jab or his lead combinations. Sean was in control with the combinations. Sean was in control with the movement. Sean did what he wanted to do. He did what I asked him to do. And the other guy got frustrated throughout the fight where he pounded his gloves together or he welded his hands around. Or there were even times he, he doesn't know English, but he was saying, come on, come on, because he didn't have the ability to initiate an attack. He fought back, but he never fought forward. And, you know, there were some wild punches that he landed, no doubt about that. But there's no way possible that a guy could have won, you know, 117, 111 score. I thought Sean should have won a unanimous decision. What did Sean tell you about his power, Ugas, and how his punches felt? Uh, uh, you know, um, in, in all the fights he's ever had, um, he's, a, you know, Sean's a powerful kid. You know, he's obviously, people look and see he's got a strong chin. But come on for a second. This guy ain't hit us like no Keith Thurman or Danny Garcia. He didn't have the ability to do any of those things that they did. So if he didn't have the ability to do any of the things that they did, how is it that he would have won this fight tonight? He wasn't nowhere, clearly he was nowhere as, nearly as good as Keith Thurman against us or nowhere nearly as good as Danny Garcia against us. He's rallying hard, rallying hard for a rematch. Sean said no. no I, ideally, I would think you we would move, think the same way. On, we're moving on to Dallas. We're going to Dallas. They're, they've already booked our tickets. I don't even like Dallas, and I'm going to Dallas. There's I'm gonna, things going on, and I don't even... Mm. <laughs> I'm going to touch on Dallas in the next question, but I do want to ask you, did you see, with the weight on Friday, any effect of no, that, and not. what happened no, there? No, I did not. No, I did not. Um, no, I did not. He showed me everything that I asked for and that I hoped for, and I'm glad that I didn't see any of that. But, you know, that type of situation, which... It's something that has never happened to him in his professional career of 32, 33 professional fights. Never happened to him in his amateur career of well over 275, 280 amateur fights. He's never missed weight. So, you know, it was a learning experience for both of us, something I never want to have to go through again. And this last 24 hours yesterday and today, you know, for him to come back from what he had to go through yesterday to make weight, that was down to the hairs on his head, the last few seconds on the clock, and the last breath that he had in his lungs, and then to come back to do what he did today, it was amazing. So I'm very happy with his performance. That was a crazy win, because one second he was over, and then the next, he listened to you, and he's under the weight, and everybody erupted. It was a crazy scene. Take it to Dallas, obviously. We know the fight's happening next weekend. You guys want Spence then over Thurman, over Pacquiao. That's the number you one target? Sense, you know, um, unless Manny Pacquiao, someone from the Manny Pacquiao camp was to say, you know, they, they wanted to take the Sean Porter fight, it only makes sense for us to go and fight the winner of uh, Spence and Garcia. And uh, Errol Spence is the guy that I believe will win the fight. Um, and, uh, you know, 
Uh, anybody who continues to question, you know, well, you ducked him before. Why would you want to fight him now? Obviously, guys, you didn't do the math. He got a pay-per-view fight. It's in Dallas Cowboy Stadium. He's fighting a guy coming up two weight classes. Why would he fight Sean Porter for less money on Fox Sports? And Sean is in his weight class. It's a no-brainer for him to take that fight. It's a great fight for Errol. He's got every advantage. He's in his hometown. He's in the Dallas Cowboys Stadium. It's a dream come true for him. So we're going to go there and, um, you know, uh, celebrate his victory. I, I fully believe that he'll win the fight. Finally, Ken, from what you saw tonight, do you think Sean at this level can beat Spence, or do you want him to take it up another level when that fight comes and if it it's comes? Just, this was fight specific. This was a certain thing that I asked him to do that was making him successful against a guy who did not have the ability to box with him. If Sean had went straight in, this guy did have the ability to fight back all night long. But when we moved and boxed and were slick and smart, he didn't have the ability to hit us. So he was very frustrated, banging his hands together, saying to Sean, come on, let's fight. And he didn't have the ability to initiate a charge to win the fight. So I, you know, um, it's, it's, the, the game plan has to be, you know, better, uh, a different game plan for Errol Spence. You know, everything involved has to be better for Errol Spence to beat Errol Spence. Errol Spence is a great fighter. New piece of jewelry, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I got this for myself when we won the WBC title. And, uh, you know, I got an opportunity to wear it tonight. Looks nice. Yeah, <laughs> Ken, thank you. thank you so much. Appreciate thank it. Ken you. Porter here in Los Angeles. Marcos Villegas for Fight Up TV.